Hey everyone, Zach Smith here with Sanger Unified and Amy Williams. And our next question that we're looking to tackle is our greatest challenges so far in our UDL implementation. So again, we're about two and a half years or so in um, to actually having pilot teams and rolling out UDL. Um, and so this is where we're at. Uh, right now, so far, our greatest challenge to UDL implementation has been not necessarily buy-in with the concept of UDL, but getting teachers comfortable with applying the concept of UDL to their actual instruction. Meaning, our teachers are jazzed up when they hear about the idea of variability and the idea of context, and they love the brain research and knowing how the brain kind of processes information. But when it comes to actually applying something like multiple means of representation to their actual instruction when they're doing the rise and fall of a plot line, for example, that's the rubber meet the road type work that we're in now where it's that's been the biggest challenge is getting that crossover, that generalization to their actual concepts um, that they're trying to teach. And we've had the most benefit most recently actually with just the, the legwork of meeting with them, um, <clears throat> PLC by PLC, planning together. And now we're starting to see that pay out, I think, in their practices, those aha moments of, oh, I get this. So what yeah. do you think, Amy? Well, I just want to say that when we talk to our teachers, um, they share that they are doing a whole lot more than they think that they're doing yeah. at times, too. Mm -hmm. So um, the combination of that intimate support with them in their PLCs, um, giving them some confidence in risk-taking, mm -hmm. but I agree. It has the most challenging comes to trying to break down the barrier of, well, but I have to have them write it. So even though they know that they really don't, that bridging of the gap, when they actually do their lesson plan, helping them to really, really design that it doesn't necessarily have to be one way or another. Yeah, I fully agree. <laughs> so one of the other um, challenges we've had um, is helping our teachers understand implementation of UDL really fits into the initiatives and our um, goals. Again, with the majority of the teachers, um, they can see how universal design um, not only um, makes more opportunities for students, for all learners, but really enhances their um, repertoires as practitioners and as designers for student learn for student learning. Um, but we ha but we have also been very explicit about sharing. You know, universal design for us. We have a high population of English learners and making sure that we're preventing long-term English learners. We have been real explicit in supporting them on how universal design also supports those students. Um, we have a big emphasis on STEAM and helping them connect universal design for those elements as well. So. In terms of being the challenge, I would say the challenge has, has really come in the opportunity to connect their um, skill sets and how it will refine and better improve their lesson design with UDL. But again, for some of those um, staff members where it takes a little bit longer to see those connections, um, that's just been us going back out and retelling the story, supporting what they're doing, um, calling out the connections that they're doing it, that they're doing where they may not see it to be. Yeah, happening. I totally agree. It's not. It's making sure UDL isn't just another thing, but it's something. It's it's the sunglasses, right? So you, it's the lenses that you look at when you apply to your science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematical thinking instruction or lessons. It's the lens that you look at and you think through when you're embedding EL good EL supports. So. Um, Getting teachers to see it not just as another thing or our UDL time, but as, okay, this is this is a broad sweeping design belief structure that we apply to everything. That's been a little bit of a stretch for some folks. Um, another uh, challenge for us has been in those specific content areas where you're living in really, really symbolic places. For example, in something like a calculus class. A, Amy and I don't have a background in calculus, and so it's a little bit terrifying. Talk about reducing threats. It's a little bit terrifying um, if we, we were there and we had to be knowledgeable of content. But 
um, finding ways to make that space relevant has proven to be a challenge um, because teachers aren't used to thinking that way. And the ones that really know their stuff in terms of the content know their stuff in a specific package. And so for us, it's both it's that it's that encouraging and challenging them to think differently while still not holding the expectation that we are the content, we are the knowledge base of their content. Like, I can't tell you how to fix calculus from a calculus mindset. All I can say is here's what UDL is. I know a lot about UDL. Help me understand calculus better and let's work together. So that's been something that that's a challenge for us in that you have these more abstract and complex subject areas that you still need to be able to design well from. Yeah. And I can tell you what has really, um, through our challenges of implementation and making those concrete to abstract connection, I think the biggest trend or challenges that has come up is how well and how versatile our teachers' knowledge is in the content that they're delivering. Because um, like Zach said, um, they know it within their framework. Um, but they have to really know it to expand it out for students through the UDL matrix. And we have um, realized that we may need to do some more support in their skills in the content areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and one of the other things that we found that was a helpful thing to this specific area is we just started reaching out. We just started banging on doors and asking for help. We I know we, call, we reached out to y'all and Cass, and you connected us to um, Johnny... Uh, Derringer, I think, mm -hmm. um, out on the East Coast. She's been super helpful. So we've just been asking for help from people, and it's been nice to see the cast UDL lights of the world respond. So um, that's kind of where we're at with challenges and things that we're working through. So thanks a lot, everyone, and we'll move on to our next question.